now it's time for the latest episode of The Bald and the Beautiful. Did you really fight? You tried to make it balding and right. beautiful? Like, I, think, I know I'm already bald. Like, right. you're still faking it. Yeah, I have an ing. I have yeah, an ing in there. I'm not, I'm not bald yet. I'm balding. said it to you before. Fire it before it quits on you, friend. <laughs> I'm, I'm Fire getting, it before it quits on you. I'm getting close to that time. Make no mistake <laughs> about it. So we'll let America decide who's bald and who is beautiful, my friend. But uh, Tim Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback, co-host with me on Fantasy Football Now. And I want to talk to you about some of the interesting quarterback play from week one, mm -hmm. and let's start with my Redskins. Your you know, guy. my, my guy, guy uh, Kirk Cousins. Look, I, that offense was out of sync, and it was out of sync in the preseason mm -hmm. as well that week one. Tell, I can't look at them objectively, right. so you tell me. Well, listen, I'm concerned, and, and we both talked about it on Fantasy Football now about you know how they didn't look great in the preseason. Terrell Pryor and Kirk Cousins seem to be on a different page, and we also talked you know on Fantasy Football now about listen. I'm not sure that the supporting cast is better than it was in years past. Sure. This is a, a downgrade, in my opinion, from Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon. And so, um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it. It was a sloppy game by Kirk Cousins. And so, look, I, I think what you're expecting is to him to, for him to have repeat performances over the past two years. And I think that with the new talent, you should be concerned a little bit. He's always started slow. Even, la even the yeah. last couple of years when he's been great, you think about uh, Cousins averaged 12 fantasy points per game, first two games of each of the last three seasons, and still finished last two years as a top eight fantasy quarterback. Uh, I think it'll take some time, but what you're counting on for me with Cousins is just volume. I think they're just going to have to throw. Uh, but certainly next week on the road to the Rams, and a Sean McVay who knows exactly how to attack him, mm -hmm. he's probably going to be outside my top ten. Yep. I think you have to be a little bit nervous. Let's stay in that same game, though. And as frustrating as it might have been for Kirk Cousins owners to watch that game, Carson Wentz owners had to be yeah. thrilled. Give me your thoughts on that. Was this a fluke, or do we think yeah. Carson Wentz has taken the next step? I definitely think he's taking the next step. I think what's interesting about this performance is it really was a sloppy game by both teams. Right. Things weren't blocked great and all that. It was really Wentz's athletic ability that separated him. And think about We've always talked about the running ability of quarterbacks being the great equalizer. The truth is, Wentz is a tremendous runner, and then yeah. you saw the escapability. I think the thing that I was probably most encouraged about, though, is the way the ball was spread around. You know, Nelson Aguilar looking like somebody that should have been drafted in the first round. You know, I mean that type right. of talent. And then you think and the about the NFL draft, just NFL to be clear. Draft. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. With that type of speed, that type yeah. of playmaking, then Alshon is, you know part of the mix, you know, Torrey Smith part of the mix, um, you know, Sproles being a part of the passing game. I think they have legitimate weapons there. And so I certainly came away pretty encouraged by what I saw, especially with just the general playmaking ability of Wentz. Six of his last seven starts dating back to last year, he's, been, he's finished as a top 11 fantasy quarterback. You mentioned the rushing. Over his, last, over his last nine starts, he's top 10 in the NFL among rushing yards, among quarterbacks. The touchdown to Aguilar was all Carson Wentz, yeah. I thought. Like, I mean, just keeping that play alive and getting the ball down to him. And the fact that Norman did a really good, Josh Norman did a really good job on Alshon Jeffrey. And what did Wentz do? He found Aguilar. He found Zach Ertz. He yeah. found other guys in that offense. So I'm with you. I think Wentz is, you know, a legit mm -hmm. kind of low-end QB1 going forward. I don't think this was a fluke. Um, you saw at the top of the segment Deshaun Watson having some fun with us, uh, <laughs> apologizing. We appreciate that for, for what, what I'm putting on television, which is fair. Um, it looks like he's going to be the starter here for the Houston Texans. How do you see uh, Deshaun Watson? Look, he had a great first drive, not much after yeah. that. Like, fantasy-wise, how does this affect DeAndre Hopkins, and what do you think about Deshaun Watson sort of as a prospect fantasy-wise? I think it's better for everybody, so it's, it's better for Hopkins. It's better um, for everybody involved if – Watson's the starting quarterback. I, I believe that to be the case. I think you'll see them spread out a little bit more because that's the stuff Watson is comfortable doing. And then I think in terms of, you know, the value in Watson, listen, we're just kind of done talking about Wentz and his ability to move. Listen, Watson's ability as a runner showed itself in the preseason. You saw it in, you know, a little bit, um, you know, week one when he had a chance to play. My concern is it may take a little bit of time. Bill Bryan hasn't set him up to succeed. He basically puts them in the second half of a game where they're getting blown out. So he didn't get the first team reps during the week of practice. Now they have a short week. And so if, he, if he's the guy, he's playing on a short week. I think you get, you know, a couple weeks down the road, based on what Bill O'Brien has done in the past, kind of getting the most out of quarterbacks, I think Watson's going to end up being a guy that has value at the quarterback position 
given the matchup in future weeks. Not to mention the fact that that rushing ability, 21 touchdowns and over 1,700 rushing yards in his last two years at Clemson. The yeah. mobility is legit, and we love that in fantasy. 11 of his 23 passes went to DeAndre Hopkins, so the target volume will be there for Hopkins. Mm -hmm. It as, definitely will. Mm -hmm. as, very well. We will see you next week, and we'll see you Sunday on Fantasy Football Now.